Well, this is a miniature painting called Three Trees. It's about uh, four by six inches in American terms. I really enjoyed it. It was uh, it was quite a treat, especially when I got to the end and I put the little yellow line indicating a canola field in the far distant background and the yellow reflection off of the field onto the bottom of the clouds. Just putting the sky on with acrylic, it's, the whole painting is acrylic on wood. Now the, the sky was very wet all of the time so that the clouds sort of blend into one another. Otherwise they look like, you know, cotton batten candy or the cutouts glued onto your, uh, onto your painting. The black that I'm using is just a ultramarine blue and a burnt umber. I want the trees to be rugged. I want them to show that they have a personality, that they have character, that they have been through storms and that they have seen, you know, the very worst of the weather and survived. But uh, that they, they show scars of being weathered. You want them to be very, I want them to be very rugged, but I don't want them to be in any way, shape, or form gross, or like a Halloween type uh, painting. Now this little tree here is, uh, is indicative of youth. It, it wants to get away. It's um, trying to get away from the old trunk, you know. That's just how we were when we were young. You, do, you hang on, but you want to have your own little space. You can see that the painting is very small. It's not much bigger than my hand. Very interesting doing these little paintings. They're, they were originally thought of as postcards, but um, and now are they, are they're, they're classed as miniatures, I do believe. In America, it's under 25 square inches is the generally accepted rule for an official international miniature. These are four by six, which is 24 square inches. But they could be like two and a half inches high by 10, if you wanted to do a big panorama. The dark at the bottom of the tree sort of helped to make sure that the tree is sitting on the ground. It's not floating in the sky or whatever. And when the foreground goes in, it will clearly indicate that we are, we have a bottom, we have a land, piece of land mass on which the tree is situated. And by having the tree very dark, 
it, it, it helps to indicate that it is vertical. When something is vertical, the light from the sky does not shine on it. Not like it shines on a lake or like it shines on a piece of flat land. I'm starting to put a little bit of indication of, of the leaves. The dark goes down first underneath the yellows and the oranges. Orange, of course, which is made up of red and yellow, is the complement of the blue. The sky is, has a blue tint to it, so the, the yellow tree will stand out quite well against the blue tint in the sky. You want the leaves to be quite thin and, and, and every limb, you try to make each limb a different pattern. So it doesn't look like balloons at the circus, you know, like a set of balloons floating in the air. The idea of having a little yellow tint in the bottom is to indicate sort of subliminally that we have some fallen leaves, but they're covered up, I guess, by the grass. Now the grass is... Um, sort of a yellow green, there's quite a yellow component to it, and yellow ring moves uh, forward in a painting quite easily. And all of the grass bunches, they all have a form. All the forms are kind of different, and different heights, and different styles of grass, and different conditions of stormy weather has brought them down into different shapes and putting a little color in the foreground, just a little touch here and there. I left a black uh, section in the corner uh, where I can put my signature my name, which will be in, in an off-white because it's on a black background. Here I'm making sure that some of the foliage comes out ahead of the trunk because some of it is in front of the trunk and some of it is behind the trunk.
Now the little bushes. I don't know why, but there seems to be a little bit of a scrubby bush wherever you go out in nature. A little place for the rabbits and the deer and the birds to hang out. Most of this painting is done in real time. In fact, it all is, this uh, video. So you can see exactly how it's put together, how you do it. If you speed it up, it just, I don't know. It looks like maybe the person is, is moving along a lot faster than they really are. It's kind of a slow process, but after a few hours, it's, 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 you have it done. Just trapping a little indication that these bush do have, or did have, leaves on them. Well, that's just about it. I'm going to add the little yellow field in the far distance, which is not as, uh, a, a hue is a little knocked back because it's in the distance. And a reflection of that yellow field up under the bottoms of the clouds. So, thank you for watching. I certainly enjoyed making this little video and I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button. It means a lot to me. Thank you.